my Niger Delta story. This is the simple story of my search for identity through history. I now discover that my initial preparation was accomplished by my grandmother, Tuamai, in the little village of Iwama, lying between Okwama and Tuam, on Brass Island, in the estuary of the Brass River, Rio Bento to the first Portuguese visitors. My grandmother, an expert monsieur and herbalist, taught me the art of the story and the culture of identity within the story. She told stories that were pure fiction, whose actions took place in storyland and in the land of the water spirits and the land of the dead. Other stories were located in identified Niger Delta communities and in the fabled land of the Obar of Benin. These stories, which I heard from my grandmother up to the age of nine years, created inside me a hunger for greater knowledge of the roots of the values set out in these stories. Integrity, respect for justice, charitable love, and the solidarity within the community. At age nine, I was taken away by my father to Nimbe the small brave city state of my 1964 publication. Nembe was many levels above Iwama in the complexity of its cultural development and history. Its story was also visible in the memorial structures raised to remember its founding ancestors such as the figure of King Josiah Constantine Okia, who invited Bishop Crowther to establish Christianity, and the memorial shrines built over the graves of founding ancestors. The story of King Frederick William Koku, who destroyed the Royal Niger Company's depot at Akasa on January 29, 1895, and escaped capture by the British was the most popular story then and continues to be a spellbinder. My teachers in primary school told these stories in detail, and they stayed with me to Government College Umahia where I began to take decisions on my life vocation. Umuahia, the best secondary school in Eastern Nigeria at the time, was essentially a science school, and the vast majority of its graduates became doctors and engineers, but it also produced a record number of literary giants, such as Gabriel Okara, Chinua Achebe, Christopher Okibo, Ken Sarowiwa, Eleche Amadi, and others. It was at Umuahia I began to write stories of the Niger Delta, beginning with the heroic struggle of King Frederick William Koko, and decided to go into history at the University College Ibadan. It was at Ibadan my skills were formally committed to the Niger Delta story. 
my great mentor was Professor Kenneth Omukadike through his book Trade and Politics in the Niger Delta, 1830 to 1885, Introduction to the Economic and Political History of Nigeria, published in 1956. In this book, D.K., founder of the Historical Society of Nigeria, countered the Western story of Africa as one of European action and African reaction. He clearly established the initiatives exercised by the Niger Delta rulers through the period. The part of Dickey's narrative that I found inadequate was in the origins of the people. Dickey derived them from Igbo migrants into the Niger Delta, attracted by the Atlantic trading slaves and farm produce. As a master historian, he conceded that his conclusions were tentative and required deeper research to validate or correct them. Indeed, I found D.K. my greatest mentor and inspiration. It was he who took me into the National Archives of Nigeria at my graduation from Ibadan in 1959 and as director of the National Archives to send me to the University of Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, where my book, The Small Brave City State, was published in 1964 moving my Niger Delta story out of Iwama to the level of the sovereign states of the Eastern Niger Delta. Relocation to Madison meant entry into the orbit of Professor Jan Van Sena. At the point of his international recognition as a leader in the use of oral traditions. Fortunately, he found the manuscript of my book, The Small Brave City State, publishable as a master's degree equivalent. From then on, Jan Van Sina became my principal academic mentor and friend. Where my American and European course mates had to contend with questions of the validity of oral traditions as legitimate sources for telling the story of communities, my problem was rather how best to get the story out of the oral data. Accordingly, my progress through the Madison program was much faster than my colleagues, and I moved swiftly beyond the story of a single Niger Delta community to the combined integrated story of the Niger Delta region as a whole. After my formal doctorate at Wisconsin, I returned to the Institute of African Studies, University of Ibadan, to continue field research in the Western Niger Delta to issue my story of the Niger Delta as a whole in the book, A History of the Niger Delta, an Interpretation of a Jaw Oral Tradition, published in 1972. A popular version of this story was issued in 2009 with the publication of The Izon of the Niger Delta, co-edited by me, Professor T. N. Tamano, and J. P. Clark. This book took the zone through the whole of Nigeria, wherever they were located in significant numbers, and through Africa into the diaspora in Europe, the Americas, and the Caribbean. For me, the search for origins was already concluded in my 1995 publication, 
the practice of history in Africa. Since Africa as a continent was already accepted as a cradle of humanity, the search for origins ends with a link to the continent. The concluding morale of my Niger Delta story identifies me as a Nimbe man proud of his heritage, rooted in his relations to other communities of the Niger Delta. Nimbe tradition states that nobody came out of the ground as a crab, that the man or woman who is ignorant of his or her origins is not credibly human. Accordingly, credible Nembe identity comes out of the Ijo connection and the Niger Delta grounding. My search for the Izon story led me to many libraries, archives, and academies. It became clear that Izon, though closely related to their neighbors in the Niger Delta, were not a mere amalgam of those neighbors. The language studies of my colleague from Ibadan to Foshakot, the late Professor K. Williamson, confirmed this for me. The antiquity of his own settlement in the Niger Delta was also confirmed by its own oral traditions and the archaeological excavations that I managed to get done at various locations in the Niger Delta. My Niger Delta story continues to develop from antiquity to our own times through generations. My Nimbe people say, a man or a woman without knowledge of his or her home will trample and walk over hallowed graves and sacred grounds. The Equity people of River State say, the native son with knowledge of the story of his ancestry has the eyes of a python. I feel privileged to live to a ripe old age, to be able to call the attention of our youth to the Niger Delta story. I urge the youth to take possession of this story and reframe it for their use. Thank you.